Welcome newcomers to Coronation Court. Every coronation is historic. Indeed, every day is historic in some form or another. But this coronation is especially historic as it will be the first time that the thrones of the West Kingdom are ruled by monarchs who are physical objects. As you know, the Crown Prince is a sentient suit of armor once worn by Albrecht von Schmutzenhelm before defeating his owner in the finals of Crown Tournament. The armor's consort, the Crown Princess, is the sentient bodice of Albrecht's lady, Catherine Bodicefiller. While neither the Crown Prince nor the Crown Princess have chosen names for themselves, there is no rule stating that they could not compete in Crown without a name, nor any hindrance to their taking the thrones without a registered device. <laughs> We're not Kaid after all. Now, court is about to begin, so you need to be completely quiet. We may be in the back of the room, but it's still rude to talk during court. It's actually worse back here, where it's much harder to hear and is thus a distraction for the other gentles attending court. Yeah, that's right, Fleeg. I'm teaching these newcomers how rude it is to talk during court, something you should have learned decades ago. That said, this is an educational experience, so I will quietly let you know what's going on during court. All rise and do honor to their majesty, the glow cloud. All hail their majesty, the glow cloud. Okay, everyone, stand up, stand up. Now bow. Okay, stand up again. Their Royal Highnesses, the armor of Albrecht von Schmutzenhelm, Prince, and the bodice of Catherine Bodicefiller, Princess. All right, time to bow again. Nice and deep. Touch your toes and just hang there. Let your head hang low. Perhaps let it wobble to and fro. Now, be sure to keep your head down. Standing there in the doorway is His Majesty the Smiling God, King of Aetenvelt, who is a guest of the King of the West for this court. Fun fact, in the coronation ceremony for Aetenvelt, the outgoing monarchs remove their crowns and place them on the thrones, and the incoming royalty approach the dais and seize the crowns for themselves. This ancient tradition, which we call the Aeton Heresy, stems from the second coronation of Aetenvelt, when the outgoing king wandered off during lunch and was never seen again. Okay, the royalty are all on the dais. Stand up straight, but be careful not to look directly at anyone on the dais. In fact, it's usually best just to keep your eyes closed and listen. You have their majesty's leave to exist for now. Welcome to Night Vale. A message from the autocrat, the Honorable Lord Connie Vention. The Golden Stag Players production of Romeo and Julie, The Two Gentlemen of Verona, will begin in the main ballroom at 6 p.m. this evening. If you are seated in the splash zone, towels and sanitizing wipes will be provided in the event that you do not have your own. The masked ball will begin in the main ballroom at 6 p.m. this evening. To help keep the occupancy of the room below maximum recommended level, any gentles found with matching masks will be merged into a single gestalt being. A mask will be provided in the event that you do not have your own. The Kingdom Garbage Change will begin in the main ballroom at 6 p.m. this evening. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the Kingdom Garb Exchange. The Kingdom Garbage Change has been rescheduled to 6 p.m. in the main ballroom. In the event that you did not bring garb to exchange, you must donate the garb you are currently wearing. No clothes will be provided in the event that you do not have your own. Their Majesty the Glow Cloud. All hail their majesty, the glow cloud. Summons the barony of the Westermark to present their taxes. Ah, taxes. Once a year, each of the baronies of the kingdom offers up taxes as the crown's share of the bounty of their lands. If the crown is pleased with their taxes, the barony has leave to continue existing for another year. If not, well, the West used to have several more baronies. They will be missed. What pitiful offerings have you brought me? to justify the continuance of your worthless existence. Let's see what the Westermark is presenting this year. Hmm, a foot of trim, very traditional, a surprisingly conservative move from the usually more daring barony. Several sheep, a signature Westermark offering, very nice. I do hope they have remembered to remove the venom sacks this year. Let's see, two dozen tiny bottles of cordial, all unmarked, an excellent choice, especially as their majesty outlawed any ingredient or allergy list several years ago. Several more sheep, a handful of handmade scented soap, and a lovely necklace of... Huh, I wonder what kind of teeth those are. I don't recognize them. 
Oh, and a live mouse with instructions on how to perform the sacrifice. <laughs> I love it when they include things for the children. Uh, last few sheep, and it looks like that's it. Their Majesty seems satisfied, which I'm sure is a relief. Their Majesty grants the Westermark leave to depart their presence, but not this world. Your Majesty, the Principality of Superlative Drought has business to run within this court. Here now opens the court of their dehydrated highnesses. Silence, worm! Your pleas are but motes of dust in the beam of our countenance. Uh, their highnesses abstain. Uh, courteously. Here continues unabated the court of their majesty, the Glow Cloud. All hail the Glow Cloud. Let Yorick Knowledge come before the oxidized throne. I believe we're able to come to the first award of the day. Awards are recognition by the royalty of the efforts contributors have given to the society. Awards come in one of a few tiers and we'll usually see them granted in court in ascending order of precedence, Armigerus, Grant, and Patronus. Some awards are society-wide, while others were created by specific kingdoms, principalities, or smaller groups. You may remember that I mentioned earlier that there is a minimum number of people required for a group. That has its roots in an unfortunate incident where the single inhabitant of Dragonshire attempted to declare themselves as a kingdom and award themselves with multiple peerages. Awards may be strictly for recognition, but others confer additional privileges and strange new powers, which are usually delineated as part of the award presentation, though the particular ability often denoted as stupid peer trick is highly individual and is often a requirement for the attainment of the honor. Sometimes it appears at birth, while other times it manifests during a time of great effort and exertion. Try not to be too close when that happens. Whereas it has come to our notice that through diverse great efforts and highway robbery, you have considerably enriched our realm, it is thus our pleasure to reward you with an award of too many arms. We grant you the rights and charge you with the crimes and responsibilities of this rank, and we further grant you the right to bear as arms the device as you have properly registered with our heralds. Purpure, a moon in her plentitude like an all-seeing eye that reaches deep into your soul and draws up terrors that you have never acknowledged, fears you did not know you had, or are they memories that you have no memory of making, and you howl in anguish as they consume your battered psyche. Argent. In this, our kingdom, and throughout the known world, and worlds unknowable. Your multifarious appendages are pleasing to behold, and a tremendous boon to our war efforts. For Lord Yorick, hip hip! Huzzah! Hip hip! Huzzah! Hip hip! Huzzah! Huzzah. Let bliss of Summer's Isle come before their majesty. Whereas it has not escaped our all-seeing notice that through diverse great efforts of peaceful resistance, you have considerably affected our realm. It is thus our duty to respond with an award of no arms. We grant you the right and charge you the responsibilities of this rank to protest as arms any devices as may have been properly registered with our heralds in this our kingdom and throughout the known world and in worlds unknowable. While your non-violent methods are anathema to our very existence, your deficit of appendages fills us with a deep feeling of kinship, for which we will give you ten of your seconds to depart. For bliss of Summer's Isle, run! Let Zathras of House Epsilon come before their majesty. Those who give of their service and the various body parts thereof to the kingdom support and enrich the realm. It is the duty and pleasure of the crown to reward such service with honor. Therefore does their majesty proclaim Zathras of House Epsilon worthy of great honor and do admit them to the right noble order of the Leaf of Merit. Their majesty now bestows a single leaf of laurel as the sign of this honor. Notice how sharp and razor thin that leaf is? Ah, he's chosen his right index finger, a very popular choice. This is a very important part of receiving any award for service. You must declare a blood type, or a blood type will be assigned to you. Hip hip! Huzzah! Hip hip! Huzzah! Hip hip! Huzzah! Huzzah. A message from the autocrat. The elevator is for loading and unloading only. 
Remember that there is only one in this hotel, and they only stop on prime numbered floors. Furthermore, the hotel is currently at full capacity due to the presence of two other gatherings here this weekend, the Ruth Buzzy Cosplayers and the Society of Crudité for Animals. So it may take some time for the elevators to arrive. In your haste, please do not use them for summoning circles. The elevator is a privilege, not a right. Day after day, day after day, in court, nor breath, nor motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean. Awards, awards, everywhere. Oh, I don't recognize this litany. Hmm. Well, it looks like the Herald is announcing the creation of a new award in the West, the Order of the Albatross. It's given to those who have devoted their entire existence in the SCA to the goal of getting a huge bleeding seabird hung around their neck. Not my particular kink, but apparently it's a popular enough pastime that we need an award for it. And the first awardees are being called up. These are called premieres, by the way, a very prestigious station, and... Oh, there are 11 of them. See how they're all beaming and holding their bird carcasses on high? This is the true magic of court, seeing people properly recognized for their actions. Oh, and now the premieres are really surprised to discover that the award carries absolutely no precedence. Okay, this is the part where we all cheer. Huzzah! 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 Louder! Huzzah! A message from the autocrat. The hotel restaurant will be open from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the main ballroom. As the hotel usually greatly underestimates the number of guests, please bring your own food, drink, and chairs. We will draw lots as to whom will serve as waitstaff. Protégés will draw twice. The strength and stability of the kingdom lie in these virtues of its people. Creativity, service, prowess, and unspeakable horrors. For if any of these are lacking, the kingdom, and thus the universe, fails. Oh, this is exciting. It's always wonderful to witness a peerage ceremony. They're among the highest honors in the society, and the ceremonies are always memorable. The path of unspeakable horrors can take different forms, which appear different to every viewer, and hence, like the ages from which they originate, are innumerable. The acolytes of the crown glorify it with their work. The application of their skills bring to it the light of madness. And, with dedication to thus neutralizing others' potency, stave off the populace from extinction in order to bring horror from our queen and to our kingdom. Let all members of the Order of the Shuggoth here present come forward and kneel before the crown. Lower... Lower... Insignificant specks of dust, what business have you before us? Your Majesty, we, the Shoggoths of the West, feel our numbers are not complete, and that there is one here present whose tireless, sleepless, undying dedication to bridging the veil between this plane of existence and the eternal city entitles them to recognition as our peer. We are agreed. Go forth and bring the candidate to us. Peerage ceremonies tend to follow one of a few similar patterns. This is a variation where the prospective peer is present in the audience and is escorted into court by current members of their order. Often the gentle will be hiding under a chair or polymorphed, and the viability of their candidacy may lie with the ingenuity with which they can avoid being dragged up the aisle for as long as possible. Oh, be careful not to get in the peer's way during the search. <laughs> careful now. Oh, that was close. It's been nearly a year since I last lost a newcomer due to just that sort of accident. It would be tragic for that streak to be broken. Only a few more weeks, and I'll be eligible for a $25 discount at Merchant's Row. We here present anonymous of no fixed address for your majesty's consideration as a candidate for membership in our order. In the secret places of your mind, you have spoken with us of them before, Shoggoth Fnor. Let all know in what manner anonymous has enriched our realm. For over a thousand years, anonymous has provided diverse treaties on 
every conceivable topic, composed the most amazing collection of poems and music, and has, on some occasions, split into four. Not a subject can be cited which does not contain works by Anonymous. And yet, Anonymous has been forgotten to history. Anonymous has shown great skill in um, uh, all, all fields and has shared these talents by example and instruction and, um, and has especially benefited the kingdom by... Uh, um, in truth, I, I can't remember. We, we are forgetting something. Something we, we are minded to admit you into the order of the Shagoth. Will you accept this honor or die? I will. You will... You, you will attempt in all your endeavors to make a noble example out of our people. I will. What were we saying? Must concentrate. Will you promise further to treat all equally and to uphold the laws and traditions of our kingdom. I will. You, you, who are you? <clears throat> you will now swear fealty to the crown. Here do I swear by head, shoulders, knees and toes, and eyes, and eyes, and eyes and eyes, and mouth, and hand, and pancreases, and thoraxes, and mandibles, and cloaca, and venom sacs, fealty and service, to the crown and kingdom, to speak and to be silent, to scream in unholy terror, in an eldritch language unspoken, in lo these uncountable eons, to come and to go, to strike and to spare, even on the seven ten split, to do and to let be in such matters as concern the kingdom, on my honor and the lawful command of the crown, in need or in plenty, in peace or in war, in living or in dying, from this hour henceforth, 6 p.m., until the king depart from his throne, or death take me, or the world end, which could be Wednesday, according to the kingdom calendar, so say I, anonymous, of no fixed address. This do we hear, nor fail to remember. To remember. Remember. Why is there silence? Continue with the next item of business. Um, yes. Sorry. I don't know what came over me. It's a shame that there are no peerages being bestowed at this court. They're among the highest honors of the society, and the ceremonies are always very memorable. With the rest of the court business wrapped up, it's now time for their majesty to disband their court in advance of the coronation ceremony. Several groups of people who have been part of the court will be called forward in their turn and recognized by the glow cloud before being released. First the court itself, the courtiers and ladies-in-waiting, followed by the guards and their hostages, then advisors, and finally the royal champions. This being done, their majesty will divest themselves of their royal mantle, crust, and core before... Hold, wait, hold on a second. Their majesty, the glow cloud, has just announced that they are refusing to step down. They've summoned their guards to seize their royal highnesses. The kingdom seneschal, under the thrall of the glow cloud, is announcing the banishment of their highnesses to protect tradition? Oh dear, this is not normal at all. Uh, oh my. Newcomers, the books of law and ceremony carried by the Kingdom Seneschal and Green Crown Herald have levitated out of their hands and are now arguing with the officers. These books appear to have become sentient. They're... 
They're announcing that their majesty is being banished for abuse of power. This is wholly unprecedented. The crown is now levitating too. It's left its place atop the glow cloud and is now hovering between their majesty and his highness. The ceremony book is... Oh my. Newcomers, I'm not entirely sure, but it looks like the ceremony book is invoking the Aten heresy and is attempting to crown the crown prince without the participation of the king. The herald and their ceremony book are now shouting their litanies over one another. The herald is trying to close court while the book is pushing into the coronation ritual. The kingdom seneschal is grappling with the book of law and has rolled into the center aisle. And the crown itself, the symbol of western majesty, is hovering above the dais, with their majesty and his highness each asserting their rights through a battle of wills. Newcomers, it's no longer safe for any of us to be in the court hall. Let's all take a break and go outside to look at... The weather. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams, wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams, world losers and world forsakers on whom the pale moon gleams, yet we are the movers and shakers of the world forever, it seems. With wonderful deathless ditties, we build up the world's great cities, and out of the fabulous story, we fashion an empire's glory. Oh, One man shit. with a dream at pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown, and three with a new song's measure can trample a kingdom down. Okay, everyone, gather together. Quick head count. Uh, well, we have enough heads, but we do seem to be down several bodies. So much for my gift certificate. So I think it's important to go over what happened while we were out of the main ballroom. The ancient venerable Order of the Rose approached the dais with their ceremonial thickets of briar and broke up the struggle between the king and the heirs, seizing the crown for safekeeping until such time as the augurs can determine the correct course of action. Dissatisfied with the will of the roses, but unable to contest their preternatural authority directly, the glow cloud and the heirs are each amassing their forces to settle this on the battlefield. In all this strife, the silver lining to all of this is... It looks like we get a new war! I imagine it will be called the... Hmm, the Great Worstern West? Um, hold on, let me re rework on this. The Waste Gorstern Rawr... Ah. Well, newcomers, the event steward has just announced that tonight's activities normally scheduled for 6 p.m. in the main ballroom have been rescheduled for 6 p.m. in the main ballroom. That's in about 15 minutes, so until next time, fare thee well, Night Vale. Fare thee well. <laughs> Welcome to Night Vale is produced in association with the Golden Stag Players and performed by Gislaine Trieste, Amaric Dufois, Cormac Moore, Asa Torvald's daughter, with special guest appearances by Juan Santiago, Fabian Arnett von Schwechinen, Frederick of Holland, Colin McLear, and Beata Augusta von Ickenheim, with technical support and engineering by Alessandro Cantori. Directed and produced by Juan Santiago. Music is Hieronymus Bosch Butt Music. Arrangement created by James Spaylink and performed by Andro. Used with permission. Inspired by and with the blessings and proper incantations of the podcast Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. Today's proverb, Aitenfeld Delenda Est. <laughs>